Is Chinese GPU maker InnoSilicon gonna give AMD and Nvidia a run for their money with their new graphics card? Well, no, but maybe in the future. It's something to keep an eye on, these domestic Chinese companies looking to start to compete in the GPU and CPU space, but we're really not there yet. They're demoing a new graphics card they have, which is up to 10 teraflops of performance, 32 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, and there's a few cut down versions. I'm not gonna go into super detail on this because I don't think anybody watching this is really gonna buy one of these. And the only real performance demo we actually get in anything that might remotely resemble a game is, is this. And uh, that's not a performance demo. They also don't know how to use a phone to like get the camera at whichever, <laughs> like, do you want to do this portrait or do you want to do it landscape? And I don't need to criticize the uh, cinematography if that's the right word for that. But that demo didn't even look like that good of graphics. So basically this is more something to keep an eye on for the future. And I'm sure there are some applications for this GPU product that just aren't for, you know, gamers, <laughs> okay? And, but maybe in the future, as I said. Now, a few more uh, quick stories here. We're seeing that on Linux, AMD Ryzen APUs are getting a big performance boost with Linux 5.1.6. We're seeing up to a 28% improvement. I'm not gonna get into the details on this one because I think Linux is a pretty small market share here, but I will link the, uh, this article in my description if you are interested and want more information. Also, we're seeing that NVIDIA is spending huge amounts of money to get a lot of five nanometer uh, wafers from TSMC. We're expecting their next gen of GPUs, Ada Lovelace for the gamers, and I think we're seeing Hopper from more of the um, you know, professional uh, si side of things. Um, possibly using TSMC's five nanometer wafers, although we could actually see them doing some work with Samsung as well. We've been seeing some rumors there. Now, uh, money-wise, uh, if you want to believe this leak, oh, where were the actual dollars? It's it's up there in the uh, billions. If you uh, want to uh, look at the details, it's looking like according to my drivers. AM, uh, NVIDIA has prepaid, this is prepaid, so upfront money, around 1.64 billion US dollars in quarter three, 2021, and will pay another 1.79 billion in quarter one, 2022, uh, up to a uh, multi-billion dollar deal going up to $6.9 billion. Now, if you read into some of the details here, I guess this is a big deal because certain customers like Apple, MediaTek, and AMD don't have to prepay that much ahead of time, uh, I guess, assuming that, that they have a, like a bigger long-term deal with TSMC. So Nvidia has to buy up more of that. Remember AMD doesn't just produce GPUs there, right? Their CPUs, the Ryzen CPUs are incredibly popular uh, and also produced there at TSMC as well. Now let's get into the main story today and then we'll do a couple little uh, 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 other things as well. I wanna talk about, um, Radeon super resolution, is this FSR? Well, no, but probably yes. What is this? Well, this is AMD's, uh, you know, next shot firing back at NVIDIA in the war on super resolution technology. So to get you caught up to speed in the super short version, we saw DLSS come out as basically, hey, let's run games at a lower resolution, but make them look more like native resolution. And the 1.0 version was honestly terrible, but the 2.0 version was incredibly impressive and a big reason to buy an NVIDIA graphics card over an AMD card. So AMD fired back with FSR, which can run on lots of GPUs, including NVIDIA GPUs, but isn't quite as advanced as the NVIDIA DLSS implementation. But since it has such wide support, uh, it could even be ported into apps like lossless scaling. So you could apply it, um, you know, a slightly inferior version of it anyway because it runs at the end of the rendering process to pretty much any game. So NVIDIA fired back with a very similar uh, upscaling technology called NVIDIA image scaling, and this runs at the driver level. So it could be applied to pretty much any game, whereas FSR was either baked into the game or you had to uh, do it kind of unofficially, like I said, through an app like lossless scaling. So this leak here from video cards, and they're saying their source is Disclose you Zen, um, who has given them a lot of info in the past that has turned out to be accurate. So I do trust that this is the real deal. And we do seem to be seeing some kind of uh, 
a marketing logo for it here. So what is this? Uh, to me, this looks like it's basically the AMD responding to NVIDIA image scaling, which can run at the driver level. And I think that this is basically going to be something like FSR that's implemented in the Radeon drivers to apply to virtually any game. Now, it says virtually any game because apparently it's not going to run on games that don't ex support exclusive full screen. So for those of you who criticized my Final Fantasy VII criticism that uh, it doesn't allow uh, exclusive full screen, screen and we're like DX12 games don't need to and I'm like yeah for the most part but for reasons like this there could still be reasons why you would want a game to be able to run an exclusive full screen anyway so I think what this is basically going to do is something like what uh, an app like lossless scaling does but it's going to run it through the Radeon driver so this is the downside to this versus doing it in an actual game implementation is that your HUD elements, your menu elements, um, and your post-processing effects will all have the super resolution applied to it. Whereas if you run FSR natively in a game, it does it uh, before that last step of the of the rendering process so that your HUD, your menus, and your some of your post-processing effects are still done at the native resolution, and that does look a little bit better. So I'm excited to see how this does, um, because honestly, I think it's going to do a great job, and I think they needed to do this to respond to NVIDIA image scaling uh, to stay competitive there. I'm just so excited to see this type of technology getting pushed. Um, I think it's great for gamers, helps older GPUs be relevant uh, longer, and it helps um, even strong GPUs be more uh, more useful at 4K. It makes 4K gaming more realistic at decent uh, image settings and resolutions, which is fantastic. And let's jump into a few more uh, things. We've got some Intel chips coming out, and I've already done some, some big reports on some benchmarks for these, but we're seeing a few more slip out. Now here's the 12400, which I'm just really excited about. I think this 12400 is going to be just like a killer budget gaming CPU. I'm not saying it's the best gaming CPU, I'm saying price to performance. This thing is going to be insane if it can stay at that, um, you know, list price, which we're expecting to be somewhere, uh, you know, under $200 for the uh, uh, version without the integrated graphics. The F version, I think we're, we'll see it around $180. Now, in this test, we're seeing the 12400 up against the 11900KF. Now, there's a big problem with this that, that you see right here. I don't think this memory was fair. They're putting DDR5 4800 up against DDR4 2666, and I think that's just a little bit silly. Now, uh, channels like Hardware Unboxed have thoroughly investigated whether DDR5 is really an advantage over DDR4, and for the most part, it, it, it doesn't really matter, although there are certain games games which do favor one over the other, sometimes DDR4 even outperforming DDR5. So that's a really interesting investigation. But the point is here that DDR4 2666, nobody with an 11900 hopefully is running 2666 DDR4 RAM. Anyway, so just keep an eye on those RAM speeds uh, when you look at these benchmark scores. But what do we see? Um, well, I think this is single core and multi core performance here, where we see the 11900KF still winning in multi core performance, but the uh, Core i5 winning in single core. But that's Cinebench. I'm more interested in gaming performance. And at gaming performance here, we're seeing it's basically a tie, except with the Core i5 ahead in all of these games tested Watchdog Legion, Far Cry 6, Dirt 5, F1 2020, and Metro Exodus. However, notice that this says 1440p, and I don't speak Chinese. I'm very curious if that is high settings or low settings, because if this is 1440p high settings, you know, these, these performances are so close that I'm wondering if what we're actually seeing here is more of a GPU limit, which would make these tests a little bit less useful. But once again, we're expecting this uh, 12400 part to only be around $180. Now, a lot of people in my comments on my last benchmark for these were like, yeah, but the motherboards are too expensive. Ah, but that's because we haven't got the chipsets below Z690 yet, which we're getting a whole bunch of leaks about here. So check this out. Um, we're seeing leaks for B660 and H610, as well as uh, we're seeing H670, B660, H610. These are from ASRock. We're seeing a whole bunch of their, their boards leaked 
yeah, a bunch of them coming out. We're seeing some from Asus. And so the fact that we're seeing all of these leaking out now tells me that we're going to see these announced most likely at, uh, these are Gigabyte, by the way, uh, at CES. And again, when we saw some pricing from Chinese retailers here, we're seeing them starting as low as $85. So I think that the motherboards are too expensive argument and uh, is is not going to be true in the near future. Um, also, again, the you need DDR5 argument for gaming also doesn't seem to actually be true in terms of um, games testing like at Hardware Unboxed, where some games benefit from it, but many don't. And some even do better on DDR4. Last thing I want to say here is we do also see the Core i7-12700F. Uh, remember, F means that it uh, doesn't, ha and this is non-K, so non-overclocking. Um, uh, is, and the F meaning it doesn't have the integrated graphics, is about 10% faster than AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X in this leaked benchmark. Now, I'm not too interested in this one, so I saved it for a last little mention, just because this is Geekbench. And again, I'm more interested in gaming and actual, you know, workloads that people actually do. Geekbench isn't a, you know, thing people do other than just run Geekbench, right? Um, but there it is. So if you want to look at these these scores here, um, WCCF Tech has tallied some up and given you some rankings here. But the point is, Alder Lake's looking good, especially in my opinion, this 12400 chip. Uh, my video's long enough, so I want to know what you guys think in the comment section. And as usual, I'll link everything in my description so you can take a closer look for yourself and have an excellent day.